Welcome into the Steelers Talk Mailbag. I'm your host, Jack Sperry, and I love doing these segments every week because I get to answer the questions that you guys are having about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Love having that two-way conversation with you guys directly. If you guys want to ask a question, you guys want to get on the show, you guys want to have your voice heard right here on Steelers Talk, the way that you do that is you click that subscribe button and you join us every single Wednesday for our Steelers Talk live shows. Um, we do a mailbag just about every single live show, so really do appreciate you guys. Make sure you click that subscribe button and join our family today. And with that, I'll pause and open it up for questions. What a hashtag this is. Hashtag Steelers. Oh, my goodness. This is one big hashtag. $5 super chat from CWK, or a black diamond, says, Steelers, do you think if they don't get Brandon Ayuk, will they try to bring back Juju? It's possible, man. It's possible, Tomlin likes, loves him some juju. He's going to be cheap. Um, I mean, he got cut by the Patriots for a reason, guys. Honestly, I think Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin III, and Roman Wilson are all better than juju. That's, what, that's where I'm at, man. Um, now, maybe juju can come in and surprise some people. He's been working with the route god, who's a, who's a social media route runner oh, coach. Yeah. Uh, so maybe things have changed, but obviously the Patriots – didn't see enough to keep him. So, uh, honestly, at this point, Juju got chronic knee issues. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. Uh, then we got Brian Gill, uh, Brian Gills. Hope I'm saying that right. Gillies, Gills. Uh, says, yo, Jack, excluding any clickbait material, in your own opinion, it's obvious that we can afford, that we can afford a premier wide receiver. Who do you see the con artist targeting in a realistic sense based on cap? So not C.D. Lamb, in my opinion. Um, we're going to see who becomes available at the trade deadline then, especially if Van Jefferson stinks. Now, if Van Jefferson continues this hot streak that he's been on and he surprises some people and he can kind of be this team's Corey Davis. Um, remember, uh, Corey Davis was a, not a great receiver that had really good production with the Tennessee Titans in this offense in 2020. Um, hopefully Van Jefferson can be that. But if DK Metcalf becomes available, Tyler Lockett becomes available, um, you know, the Texans have some very good wide receiver depth. I guess we'll just have to see, man, but it does seem like the Steelers like their receiving room right now. Uh, but I'd say, you know, probably DK or Tyler is probably what you're hoping for at the trade deadline at that point. Then we got one from Kristoff saying, if the, if the Iuke situation falls through and Dallas puts CeeDee Lamb, God, I just said this, <laughs> would you trade George Pickens at a high draft pick, first or second rounder for him? Would that even be enough? So first of all, I don't think Dallas is even going to be putting up CeeDee Lamb for trade. It's too late into the offseason, in my opinion. Um, you know, this is probably what it would have to look like. And honestly, the Cowboys, this might not be enough for the Cowboys, right? They might ask for like another second rounder along with George and a first rounder. Because CeeDee Lamb, you can make an argument, is a top five, top three receiver in football. Um, so it's not going to come cheap. And there's going to be a lot of teams that want to get him if he's made available. So first, Cowboys need to make him available. Don't think that's going to happen. And even if he does, I don't think the Steelers are going to be willing to pay the price to go get him. So highly, highly, highly doubt CeeDee Lamb's a Steeler. But let me know down there in the comments section, would you trade a first and Pickens to get CeeDee Lamb? Type A for accept or D for decline. I'm guessing a lot of people are going to type decline here and for good reason. But this will be the pinned comment on today's show. YouTube's going to throw an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. And when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question. Got a black diamond in here. DJ KJ says, if the Steelers were to choose Justin Fields over Russell Wilson, how would the QB room play out for the next upcoming years or, var or various versa? So listen, man, obviously, if you're going with Fields this year, you're hoping that he's the long-term answer. Um, and if you're moving off Russell Wilson that early, you feel pretty darn good that he is not your long-term answer. So Fields will still have to prove it. If he gets the week one starting job and he starts the entire season, he's still going to have to play well. Um, and if he doesn't, Steelers will be looking for a new quarterback next year. But if he does play well, they probably sign him to a new contract, a pretty hefty contract, you know, probably upwards of 35 to 40 million, especially if he plays well. Um, and that's going to be it, man. So Fields, if he gets the opportunity, hope he capitalizes. Going from Pittsburgh fan, Pittsburgh Steelers fan eight says, I'm a huge special teams man. Do you guys agree Cam Johnson looks really good, like Pro Bowl good, or is that just me? He was awesome. In he's been awesome in training camp, man. Uh, he's got a big leg. 
I think that's an underrated part of his game is that he's got a big leg and he can put it where he wants, which was the biggest thing Presley Harvin the third. God not rest his soul in the National Football League. He stinks. So like Cam Johnston, I'm really a big fan. I think the Steelers got themselves a good one. And I think it's really going to help things out in the special teams department this year. Got one from Kevin, the elder God says you want you would think once Frazier starts uh, taking first team reps in practice in a preseason game, it becomes his job to lose right. Um, it depends. If Herbig's hurt, then not necessarily. I think it gives him an opportunity to earn the job for sure. But if he goes out there and he stinks, right, they might just go back to Herbig. So um, I would, I'll say this. If, he, if, if Herbig doesn't play this weekend or the rest of the preseason and Frazier gets the rest of the first team center opportunities, what I'll say – is that I think that he's got an opportunity to win the job, for sure. Um, but he still has to earn it. If we know anything about Mike Tomlin, is that he makes these rookies earn it, all right? And that's the way that it should be, and I think Frazier's going to do a good job. Wouldn't surprise me at all if he's the week one starter. Now, before we get to the rest of the questions here, go ahead and check out our friends at Fanatics if you want an old-school throwback classic Steelers t-shirt for a great price today. If you use our link, chatsports.com slash throwback, click that link. I'll put it in the comments and the description. You make a purchase, Fanax is going to send us part of the proceeds. So if you want to help out the channel today and you want a brand new Steelers t-shirt to boot, go to chatsports.com slash throwback and get this Steelers t-shirt on your body just in time for Steelers regular season. Go on from Kevin Reed. Says, do you think uh, McCormick supplants Daniels by the end of the season? I don't. And the reason for that is James Daniels is still really good. James Daniels is still young. He's, I believe he's only 26 years old. Um, Isaac Sayamalu is definitely not going anywhere. Um, honestly, I think McCormick's best chance of playing is either A, somebody gets injured, or B, center. All right, Because they've been playing a little bit at center this, this training camp here. Obviously, the long-term plan is Frazier to be the center. All right, That's not what I'm saying. But like... If Frazier is having a really tough time and McCormick's looking good, I mean, that's probably the second most likely way he hits the field this year because Daniels and Sayamalu are both really good. All right, so unless those guys get hurt, really don't see McCormick hitting the field this year. Going from Bill Norton Jr. says, as it stands right now, what percent chance do you give the Steelers to land Ayuk? Well... I'm recording this on Wednesday, by the way, for our live show. So if you're watching this in the, in the regular video version, it's later. So maybe an extension's already done. Or he's a stealer, so who knows. But right now, as I stand here right now, I'll say a 20% chance. 80% chance he's a niner. Um, I don't think it's zero, but uh, it's definitely looking bleak at this point as I'm recording this. So let's say you guys. Let me know down there in the comment section what is the percent chance that Brandon Ayuk is a stealer this year. Put it on a scale of 0 to 10. I gave it a 20. Um, let me know what you guys are thinking down there in the comments. Got one from Cash, Cash Ice 12 it says, thoughts on Michael Thomas. So uh, we did some Michael Thomas content on the channel a couple months back. Steelers apparently aren't interested in, interested in him, but I think he could provide some value. Um, would he be better than Van Jefferson? I honestly don't know. Van Jefferson has looked really good in camp. He's getting open a lot. Uh, he's a four, he runs a 4-3-9. He's fast. He's big. He's a good, he's a good run blocker. Like In a run-heavy offense like the Steelers, I think that Van Jefferson is exactly what Arthur Smith is looking for. So Michael Thomas, he's older. Uh, there's been reports that he's been uh, a bad locker room presence. Uh, you know, I think he's got some really great contested catch ability. I think he can help the Steelers, but uh, right now it seems like the Steelers really like Van Jefferson. Got one from David Memes, Master 1250 or 1205. Says, if George Pickens goes down with an injury, are you concerned about our other wide receivers? If one of them could take on that wide receiver one, if Pickens was to get injured. Absolutely. This is my biggest fear right here. If you don't land Brandon Ayuk and George Pickens gets injured, I, I mean, I think Van Jefferson, at be best case scenario, he's a decent number two. He's not a number one. I don't see Roman Wilson taking up that mantle year one in the league, and I don't see Calvin Austin the third tiny, tiny receiver picking up that role either. So George, right now the Steelers are – Really desperate to keep George Pickens healthy this year. If he gets hurt, it's going to be a big problem. 
and they might have to get desperate to get a guy, like maybe Michael Thomas in that situation, right? Maybe you go uh, really go out and give up a first-round pick for a receiver at that point. I don't know, all right? But uh, right now, with the way things are currently set up, if George Pickens gets hurt, that's going to be a big problem for the Steelers. So make sure you guys click that thumbs-up icon if you haven't already, if you are a real one. Really do appreciate everybody uh, tuning in today. If you're enjoying what you see, uh, make sure you guys click that thumbs-up icon and help out the channel in this free and easy way. Going from, uh, love this name, Cover 7 Lip Riz Stubby with the picture of Saban on there. This guy knows his ball. Says, do you think Van Jefferson will be closer to what Corey Davis did in 2020 under Arthur Smith, what Allen Robinson did with the Steelers last year? Let me take a drink before I answer this. God, I hope he's not Allen Robinson. If he's Allen Robinson, the Steelers are screwed. All right, because... Unless Roman Wilson is, like, really good in year one, this team is screwed if Van Jefferson isn't, like, a legit number two receiver. Um, do I think he can get there? Can, do I think he could be as good as Corey Davis? Yes. I mean, does anybody think of Corey Davis as this amazing receiver? No. But in this offense, with as much play action and as much running that this team is going to be doing – there's going to be a lot of stuff schemed open in the play action game. So you don't need an elite separator – as your number two guy. You just need somebody that's fast enough to, to go on the crossers, make a tough catch every once in a while, uh, and be a good run blocker. And that's what Corey Davis was, and that is what Van Jefferson is, especially when he's healthy. People forget Van Jefferson has been hurt these past two years, which is why his numbers have been complete shit, if I'm being honest, all right? No production the last two years, but he's been hurt. Now he's back healthy. He's a talented receiver. He's fast. He can be a deep threat. He's a really good run blocker. Uh, and Arthur Smith loves him, all right? So if he's good enough for Arthur Smith, at least for now, he's good enough for me. So let me know down there in the comments section, will Van Jefferson be a legit number two receiver this year? Give me a yes or a no down there in the comments section. Is it just preseason hype for Van Jefferson, or could he actually be something decent? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments. That'll be it for today's mailbag, guys. I appreciate all of your guys' support. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now because uh, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, and if you want to join our family today and you want to get your voice on next week's Steelers Talk uh, mailbag, make sure you click that subscribe button right now.